popular question many people going through a spiritual awakening have is shouldn't white light represent the higher heavenly realms? Why would white light represent the false light? So today I'm going to be explaining white light. In my video, this is where the soul goes after death. I talk about how the white light represents the lowest bandwidth and therefore the lowest possible realm that we can access upon leaving this reality. So it represents the false light. Now, many people had questions about why exactly white light would represent the lowest possible bandwidth, therefore the lowest possible dimension that we can access instead of the highest possible and the highest potential realm. Since all of the colors of the rainbow would turn into just white. So white light at that sense would be the all encompassing light of source consciousness that then fragments itself into lower bandwidths, AKA into lower dimensions and creates based off of all of the different spectrums of frequency. But when it comes to the false light and when it comes to the lowest bandwidth of light that we can access, the reason why we see white light is twofold. The first reason why has to do with the third hermetic principle, which is the principle of vibration. And what this means is that everything in this universe vibrates. That initial vibration is known as OM. And from Om, all other vibratory states come into creation. So vibration is what creates in this reality, but also this reality is made of light. So this universe is made of light and how that light carries out and manifests, how that light expresses itself as creation is through vibration. So, why this law is important to know when it comes to white light is because the highest vibrating light or the highest vibration, which would mean the fastest vibration mimics the lowest vibration. So when something is vibrating so fast, it looks like it's not even vibrating at all because that's how fast is vibrating. But the same goes for its exact opposite. It's entirely complete opposite. And that is when something is vibrating so slow, it looks like it's not even vibrating at all. So the fastest possible oscillation, the fastest possible vibration, looks still, which is why stillness is such an important state for us to develop and cultivate. But also because if the fastest vibrating light looks still, because that's how fast it's vibrating, the lowest vibrating light also looks still, but it's for the complete opposite reason. It's because it's not vibrating fast at all. So it's the slowest bandwidth and the slowest bandwidth that I'm talking about for the lowest frequency that something can vibrate at is going to mimic its opposite, which would be complete source, absolute total light. So the lowest possible dimension that we can access here when I'm talking about the false light, when I'm talking about when we enter into the fourth dimension upon leaving this reality. The first initial option for light that we will have access to is the white light that's representing the third dimensional, completely mechanical, completely automated karmic reincarnation cycle. Karmic meaning there is no choice within it. It's like a high powered magnet. It pulls you into it. Before we experience the luminous, clear, white light that Hermeticism and Buddhism teaches us about, or that we can see for ourselves by purifying and activating our crown center, we will first experience dual light. And this dual light will appear white, hence the false light. 
This is the settling point for most souls here on earth. It is the lower astral light. Lower astral light is dense and contains impressions that are from our limiting beliefs of the infinite. Therefore, they are astral realms that play out our human, religious, and spiritual limiting, fearful structures. They contain all lower emotional and mental energies that causes us to stay earthbound. But it is an earthbound inside the astral. If we do not know ourselves upon leaving this reality, our consciousness can either stay in one of these lower astral dimensions, or if there was heavy karmic imprints, the soul can be involuntarily and automatically drawn into another reincarnation immediately. Judgments and fear in particular act like bricks to our consciousness and keep us weighed down to the karmic wheel. We can also be attracted to these different realities in the fourth dimension if we simply are attached to our human identity beyond our human experience with no awareness that there is a white light and there is a luminous white light that is super sensible. This luminous white light is also called non-dual light. I perceive it as silver. Many also perceive it as iridescent light. The super sensible light is more subtle. It is not dense light. So let me be clear. There is a luminous, pure, clear light. And then there is a low frequency, dense, white light that represents the third dimensional karmic wheel. It represents soul loss and involuntary reincarnation. So it's an incarnation, but it's one based off of so much soul loss, so much loss of consciousness, that it can be considered a state of complete spiritual amnesia that the being is not consciously opting into that life, which leads us to the second main reason why white light represents false light. And that would be because of what those realms represent. So it has largely to do, if not wholly to do, with why they're emanating that white light in the first place. And why those realms that I'm calling the false light, but we could just look at the third dimensional reincarnation cycle or the lowest form of the fourth dimension, why those are emanating white light is because of the consensus reality that is contained within them. So what I mean by consensus reality is that when we leave this reality, there's these different dimensions that we journey through. And when we're journeying through them, they represent different levels of consciousness. Different dimensions represent different levels of consciousness. If you'd like to know more exactly about what I'm talking about when it comes to the fourth dimension, you can watch my video on that titled The Fourth Dimension Explained. Now, the fourth dimension is very important when it comes to this whole concept of light because within the fourth dimension, there are multiple different realms, multiple, and they're made up completely of consensus realities. So a consensus reality in this case is a belief system that was so strongly believed by a large consensus group of humans that in the astral plane, it created a full and entire thought form that has its own energetic parameters that I'm calling a realm. And those energetic parameters are where all of the beliefs are being acted out inside the astral realm in the fourth dimension of that belief system, of that consensus reality. So our thoughts here create actual astral realities. Or if our thoughts here aren't original or creative, what they're doing is being fed into belief systems and therefore consensus realities that are already established in the fourth dimension. So what the white light represents when it comes to these consensus realities are very low consciousness. And that's why people think they are a trap. It's because these lower dimensions of light can attract you into their field if your frequency is in strong resonance with them. In fact, the Gnostic groups known as the Essenes taught that it was even some forces in nature's role to keep a consciousness in the lower bodies of infinity. These lower bodies are known as the mental, the causal, the astral, and the physical. 
But the more we awaken to ourselves as source energy, and the more we awaken to ourselves as infinite and eternal sovereign beings, we reunite with the higher mind. This is called the luminous mind. And this luminous mind is the pure, clear, subtle light that is what we awaken to when we are enlightened. We know ourselves as the light. Before we know this, we are pulled into the lower mental body, the lower causal body, the lower astral body, and the physical expressions of light. I know this can sound unnerving, but this is truly at the core of mystery school teachings. It was this awareness of becoming caught in samsara, or what people are calling trapped inside the tunnel of light. When we do not have the awareness needed to navigate the lower astral realms inside the fourth dimension, these lower frequency realms are actually reflections. What did we expect inside a mirrored universe? They are reflections of our own fragmentation. They're very poor imitations of what higher states of consciousness truly are. But they had so much consensus energy, so much belief go into those realms that in the astral realm, they still create some form of reality. And so when those are emanating, certain representations of what those realms contain, it's also gonna emanate white light because that realm genuinely believes that it is the representative of white light. It is heaven. There's just kind of like all of these clouds and there's not much going on and the heaven looks quite <laughs> dead. It's one dimensional. It's not even that well thought out really, but it's just this representative of this lower frequency version of what higher states of consciousness are. And higher states of consciousness are highly creative. The higher your consciousness is, the more creative you become because creation is pretty creative. So the higher consciousness you are, you're in alignment with creativity. And everything in existence can just be summed up as imagination. Source could be summed up as imagination. Mind, all is mind. We know that from the Hermetic principles as well. Mind can just be summed up as imagination. So the higher consciousness a being is, the more creative they are. So that's also for the opposite. If we're looking at a very one-dimensional version of heaven and we're seeing it just represented by white light and a consensus that had adhered to dogma, that's not creative because that doesn't have a strong enough consciousness within the individual to be multidimensional, to be highly conscious and therefore high vibratory. So it's not that there's something wrong with white light because once again, white light in its highest vibratory state contains all the seven different rays and what we know as all the different seven colors that we can perceive. So within that, that can absolutely mean that we are tuning into a very high frequency realm. But that depends on how conscious we are because the highest of white light would actually not even be manifested. It wouldn't express as what we're seeing as physical light. So when we're thinking of white light containing all of the colors within it, we're coming from even a materialistic Newtonian way of perceiving light. And once again, this can absolutely mean still that we're perceiving white light and if we have a very high frequency. But at that point, it'd be so high of white light that it could even be black <laughs> because the highest density, the highest vibration of realms would be complete black. So black represents all of the colors absorbed into the totality of the all, which is why I wear it so much because it looks great. I mean, does Greg Braden get this crap for wearing black all the time? Just call me Sarah Braden. Greg O'Caldy. It's just that we're most likely going to see the lower frequency realm 
of white light rather than just go straight to source white light. And when people are going through near-death experiences and they're brought into a realm of white light, they're seeing the truth of their being. They're, they're just shifting their focus from outside of this physical dimension internally into the light of their consciousness because everything in this reality and this universe is expressed as light. This is what the hermetic principle, all is mind, also means. Mind came from the word noose in hermeticism. And hermeticism was using the term noose as the term light. That's how we would know what noose means today. It just so happens that light means noose, but also noose means to know where we get gnosis from. So noose means light and it means gnosis. And you combine those and you get mind. So during an NDE, people are just going into the truth of their being, the gnosis of their being, to experience their light, aka mind. In that case, it's like a lobby. It's like a meetup place where you just hang out in the non-physical. And so when people are having NDE experiences, that does not mean that they're automatically inside the false light. They're just talking to their manager. So I even have mystical experiences and how that's portrayed to me through my physical senses is sometimes through white light. And that's absolutely fine. I'm not worried that I'm accessing the false light because I know the difference between the false light realms that are emanating white light from a fractured bandwidth and that they're just emanating it because they're a consensus reality versus the light of my being that is simply taking notes from myself. Now, when it comes to how light is represented from beyond the fourth dimension, things get far more easier. And that's because of alchemy. When we talk about gold and how the whole process of alchemy is to turn lead into gold, what we're really talking about is the spiritual transformation of our consciousness into the state of enlightenment. And that has a specific color that can be perceived in the non-physical, which is gold. That's why alchemy was known in Asia as the golden elixir. It's because golden elixir was in reference to literally our energy field, our Taurus field being golden because that is what emanates from an enlightened being, from an enlightened consciousness. So that's why the fifth density or fifth dimension and above are represented as a golden light. It's even perceived as a champagne colored light and sometimes a rose colored light. If we're coming from the Rosicrucian tradition, we will also experience that from a rose colored light. So you have golden light, the golden elixir field, which represents the fifth dimension and above. But then you also have champagne colored light. And then you also have rose colored light. And these are all referencing from clairvoyance, a higher dimensional field, fifth dimension and beyond. They're not referencing the lower colored fractured rainbow spectrum that we see in the fourth dimension and neither is it the third dimensional and lower fourth dimensional white light just automatic reincarnation cycle there's literal reasons why when we're seeing a golden luminous energy field that that's signifying enlightenment and that's signifying a certain level of reality so those levels of reality are directly corresponding to specific dimensions. And that's what we're seeing here in the luminous energy field and what we're seeing here even representative through the aura. That's signifying the dimension that it's connected to with that color. But just like how the lowest vibrating white light is not the actual higher frequency, higher vibrating white light, so too is our golden field 
the golden elixir field of enlightenment, that's not signifying the yellow ray when it comes to esoteric astrology, how there's seven different rays that are emanating from a white light. The golden energy field is not connected to that yellow ray. So I want you guys to notice here how you can have a certain field that's signifying a higher dimension and yet the physical color that it's representing has a lower possibility just as much as it's signifying something beyond the third dimension and beyond the fourth dimension. I hope this has helped clarify the dead heavens. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakening. See you next time.